debates and decisions that are shaping our continent now in Europeans. Venice in the sunshine in Carnival Week, one of the world's greatest cities at its greatest, and this year celebrating the 300th birthday of popular dramatist Carlo Goldoni. But the sunshine wasn't to everyone's taste, and for some the unseasonably high temperatures this February are a harbinger of bad times ahead, like the actor who's playing the role of Goldoni this year. 300 years have passed by since I first saw the light of the sun here in this marvellous city of Venice. Since then there have been a few changes, it's true. The water level has risen a bit and I'm a little worried for my city. Venice floods regularly and the Adriatic is rising. Tides and floods now nibble at palace foundations and the city's lost 23 centimetres to the waters in the last century. Roberto Lupi is president of the Gondoliers Association. He's proud to have maintained a thousand-year-old tradition for the last 30 years, despite the pressures of the modern world. The job's pretty hard as there are many motorboats. They're going back and forth all the time, so it's difficult to stay upright on the gondola. But, Roberto says, his colleagues fear an even greater peril, Hi. climate change. The thing that concerns us most these last few years is that high tides are more and more frequent. It's no longer 100 times a year, but 200 or 250. This could pose serious problems, not because we'll have trouble getting under bridges, but because if there's a combination of bad weather or the Sirocco wind at high tide, we could see a return of floods like the one in 1966. In that year, Venice and its treasures were submerged when the waters rose by two meters, the worst flood in the city's history. After years of studies and furious debate, the state began a monumental project called Moses. Huge underwater chambers will protect the lagoon's sandy floor. Completion is due in 2012. By then, 78 mobile dikes will be able to plug the gaps between the three islands that separate the lagoon from the Adriatic. When the tide reaches one meter ten, compressed air is injected, raising a flood barrier. It's the heart of an entire system to be developed, says the president of the Venice Water Authority. The project has been designed to cope with a 60 centimetre rise, nearly three times the predicted rise, the off-site at 23 centimetres. So I would say that by allowing for 60, we can guarantee the security of the city. We've established a high level of protection, even in a worst-case scenario. Nothing could be less certain, counters the environmental lobby. The World Wildlife Fund's regional representative, Paolo Palasco, wonders if it will work if the international scientific findings, suggesting two to eight degrees of global warming over the next century, are confirmed. European coastlines are already feeling the effects. And if nothing's done, he fears the worst. Obviously, the question's not just a local one concerning Venice. The whole coast is in danger, from Trieste's low-lying and sandy shorelines to the Po River Delta. As you can see here, the shoreline is open to the sea, so without any doubt, it would be completely swept away if there were a big rise in the sea level. There could be a two or three metre rise, some say, if all the glaciers melt, a four or five metre rise in the next hundred years. So there are great concerns, not just for Venice, but for the entire Adriatic coast. If this happens, Moses will be totally inadequate, as it's only designed for average high tides. The European Union's committed to cutting greenhouse gas emissions by 20% in the next 13 years, compared to 1990 levels, to try and stop the rot. According to the Corilla Consortium that oversees all research on the lagoon, the study of Venice's ecosystem could help Europe. 
la laguna di Venezia è importante per gli effetti dei cambiamenti globali. No? Venice's lagoon is important to understand the effects of global climate change, not only in terms of sea levels, which is obvious, but also in terms of ecosystem changes that could be triggered by climate change. A temperature change of just one degree can drastically change the way pollutants spread or can modify chemical and biological reactions. So several European nations already see the lagoon as a sort of sentinel that can help us understand the early signs of these changes. The city's mayor says it's right to be concerned, but so much is still uncertain. His priority is to protect the architectural and urban heritage of the Doge's city, but money is too tight to mention in the expensive process of restoration, or even for raising the city's foundations, and work has been going on for decades and decades, he says. The Moses project was chosen ahead of cheaper options and will eat into money needed to maintain Venice and drain community budgets, complains the mayor. The city administration has less and less money. Why? Because the state has decided to sink 4 billion euros into this huge engineering project at the lagoon's entrances. And if you do this, you can't do all the rest. There's not a single euro for restoration or repairs from Brussels. The EU has done nothing for Venice. There's another monster under the bed that threatens Venice's existence. This time, a man-made one. After this glimpse of Venice's People's Carnival, let's go behind the facade and deeper into the heart of the real city. Muriel Beni lives in Canareggio, one of the last parts of Venice still inhabited by ordinary folk. Beni runs Aquavit, an alternative tourism group that respects the environment and the local way of life. Here it's not climate change that is the major worry. It's house prices, which are rising fast and forcing Venetians to flee the city. Venice's social reality is already disappearing and creating social problems that are specifically Venetian. Property speculation is out of control and there's an exodus of people. Tourism imposes huge pressure too. In some of the most crowded areas, people are literally escaping the crush. You just can't live any longer in districts where narrow streets have to cope with never-ending groups of 50 tourists. Many fear Venice will end up as a museum emptied of its population. Whether or not it succumbs to the waters will depend on international decisions on climate change. And these questions are at the top of the agenda for next month's EU summit.